Hey, remember that Chinese spacecraft that got hit by space debris? Yeah, it's just come back. It's crazy how it actually made it back. From what we know, the damage isn't minor at all. So today, let's take a look at how China bring it home safely. And also how China tests its brand new reusable rocket. The return capsule of China's Shenzhou 20 spacecraft, which was flying without astronauts on board, safely touched down at the Dongfeng landing site in Inner Mongolia at 9.34 a.m. Beijing time on Monday, according to the China Manned Space Agency, CMSA. Initial checks at the landing site showed that the capsule was in good shape with no visible issues, and everything inside was well preserved. CMSA confirmed that the Shinzo 20 return mission was a complete success. With this landing, CMSA also announced that all major tasks related to the space station's emergency response have now been successfully wrapped up. First, let me quickly recap the background. Shinzhou 20 launched from Jiuquan last year as the 20th crewed mission to China's Tiangong space station. The mission was originally supposed to wrap up on November 5, 2025, with a normal return to Dongfeng. However, during routine inspections before re-entry, engineers found a tiny crack in one of the return capsule's windows. It's believed the damage was caused by a piece of space debris smaller than a grain of sand, but that was still enough to raise serious safety concerns. As a result, the Shenzhou 20 return was immediately put on hold. In the end, the crew didn't come home in their own spacecraft at all. Instead, they used the return capsule from the newly arrived Shenzhou 21, safely landing at Dongfeng on November 14, 2025. This borrowed capsule return was a first for China's human spaceflight program and showed just how flexible the system can be when things don't go as planned. By the time the final plan for the unmanned Shenzhou 20 return was locked in early last month, Shenzhou 22 had already completed its crewed launch and docked with Tiangong on November 25th. Since this return is unmanned, there's no risk to astronaut safety. That means the big question isn't, is it safe for people? But can the spacecraft itself survive the stress of re-entry? In a way, this makes Shenzhou 20 a rare real-world experiment. Engineers almost never get the chance to study a damaged spacecraft coming back through Earth's atmosphere for real. The main focus is on the windows. A lot of details still can't be shared publicly, like close-up photos or the exact reinforcement methods, but we do know the damage is serious. In one interview, an engineer explained that the impact happened at such a high speed that it damaged an area more than 10 millimeters across, making it look almost like the glass had been punctured. Because the spacecraft was already in orbit, they couldn't inspect it directly. That's why getting the capsule back on the ground is so important. One of the biggest questions is how the heat shield and the cracked window behave during re-entry. Will the cracks spread further, as ground simulations suggest? Or will the real world result be different? According to Zheng Wei from the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, the window is made of heat-resistant glass. So the key issue is whether it can survive the extreme heating and ablation during re-entry. In simulations and wind tunnel tests, engineers recreated the damaged window and found that the cracks would likely continue to grow. There's also the question of repairs. After the launch of Shenzhou 22, it was revealed that the window was repaired from the inside. Fixing anything from the outside in space is extremely difficult, so removing or replacing the window was never an option. The only realistic approach was to reinforce it from inside the cabin, likely using layers of insulation and structural support. It's not as simple as tape or glue, of course, but the idea is similar. Seal and strengthen what's already there. From a human spaceflight perspective, this capsule can't be considered 100% safe for carrying people anymore, which is why it won't be used for a crewed return. However, it can still be valuable for cargo return missions. For this flight, extra reinforcement measures were added, and the engineering team is confident the spacecraft can bring cargo back safely. When the damage was first discovered, astronauts used a 40 times microscope on the space station to photograph the defect from multiple angles. Glass experts on the ground later confirmed that a small triangular section had cracked and been punctured. The damaged area was only a few millimeters across, and the debris that caused it was estimated to be about one millimeter in size. On December 9th, astronauts even went outside the station to take photos of the spacecraft from the outside. At the time, two crewed spacecraft were docked to Tiangong, which meant the robotic arm's movements had to be carefully planned. 
This was a first-of-its-kind situation for the ground team, requiring extensive simulations and analysis. The China Manned Space Administration later confirmed in a press release that, as planned and depending on conditions, the astronaut crew carried out protective measures on the damaged window of the Shenzhou 20 spacecraft. So now we're at the moment everyone's been waiting for, watching Shenzhou 20 come back. During re-entry, China rely on the spacecraft's onboard monitoring systems to track things like whether the cracks grow, how well the capsule's heat protection holds up, and whether the overall structure stays intact. As I mentioned earlier, the Shenzhou re-entry capsule uses a blunt, cone-shaped design with an ablative heat shield. In theory, this setup is very good at handling the extreme heat and pressure of re-entry. The problem is the cracked window. Those cracks can concentrate heat and increase vibration, which raises the risk. If things go wrong, and even with the internal reinforcement in place, there's still a chance the capsule could break apart during re-entry. That's exactly why the data from this flight matters so much. Just like rocket failures during development, success here isn't the only valuable outcome. As long as engineers get solid, real-world data, this mission is still a win. An unmanned re-entry like this is a rare chance to gather first-hand information on how actual damage behaves during atmospheric return. We'll likely see technical papers with detailed quantitative analysis of debris damage within about six months. And that knowledge won't just help China, it'll be useful for the entire aerospace community. Engineers will likely take the capsule apart to pinpoint what caused the cracks measure how fatigued the materials really were, and evaluate how the thermal protection system performed overall. This phase should move relatively fast, with an initial report expected within about two months. Those results will directly influence future upgrades to the Shinjo spacecraft, including plans to thicken the windows and strengthen the attachment points of the external shielding. So the January 19th return is a big moment. If the spacecraft makes it through re-entry and recovery, the hardest part is over. Even though this was a serious incident, it also acted as a real-world stress test for human spaceflight systems. Personally, I'm optimistic. It feels like one more hidden weakness is about to be identified and removed. Space exploration is never smooth or predictable, and honestly, that's exactly what makes it so interesting. All right, let's switch gears and talk about a brand new Chinese rocket. On January 12th at 4 p.m. China Standard Time, 8 a.m. UTC, CAS Space successfully flew its new suborbital research rocket, Li Hong 1, from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. The rocket reached a peak altitude of around 120 kilometers, just beyond the Kármán line. On this first flight, Li Hong 1 flew as a two stage vehicle, with both stages powered by solid rocket motors. The first stage carried the vehicle most of the way up, and then the second stage ignited to push the experiment return capsule higher into space. Once there, the capsule provided about five minutes, roughly 300 seconds, of microgravity for the payloads on board. After that, it re-entered the atmosphere and deployed parachutes, landing softly about 150 kilometers downrange, within just 100 meters of its planned target. While the capsule was coasting near the edge of space, the first stage was already on its way back down. It performed a controlled descent using four grid fins at its base, which also helped control the rocket during ascent. These grid fins guided the booster to a controlled impact in the desert near the launch site. This wasn't about recovery just yet. It was about testing guidance, control, and re-entry techniques that CAS Space plans to use on future reusable rockets. CAS Space later explained that this flight verified both the re-entry and deceleration of the return capsule and the booster's ability to precisely control where it comes down. According to the company, the data gathered from this test will be critical for developing reusable orbital launch vehicles. As for what Li Hong-1 carried, CAS Space confirmed several experiments were on board, though only a few were made public. One tested laser-based additive manufacturing in microgravity, while another exposed rose seeds to space radiation to study how it might influence their evolution. And yes, there was also an advertisement on board, in the form of two Popmart Space Molly figures, which are now being sold as collectibles. Details on Li Hong-1 itself are still fairly limited, but we do know the rocket stands about 9.3 meters tall, weighs roughly 7,000 kilograms, and produces around 15.9 tons of thrust at liftoff. 
It can carry up to 150 kilograms of payload and reach altitudes of up to 200 kilometers, depending on mission needs. That allows it to offer anywhere from about 100 to 300 seconds of microgravity. The rocket uses two solid stages built by Xi'an Aerospace Commercial Rocket Propulsion Technology, features four grid fins for control, and carries its experiment return capsule inside a payload fairing during ascent. So why build Li Hong 1 at all? Beyond generating revenue alongside CAS Space's Kinetica 1 launches, the goal is to give researchers a fast, flexible way to test technologies in microgravity without needing long orbital missions that last weeks or months. That said, CAS Space is also looking ahead. The company wants to evolve this return capsule into a spacecraft capable of staying in orbit for up to a year before coming back, something that's currently limited to state-owned programs. Among commercial companies, AZ Space is the only other player known to be working toward a similar capability. Looking forward, repeated Li Hong 1 flights will help CAS Space build experience for landing the first stage of its future Kinetica 2 orbital rocket, as well as operating the Li Hong 2 reusable suborbital space tourism vehicle. Li Hong 2 is designed to carry seven passengers above the Kármán line for about four minutes of weightlessness with test flights expected sometime between 2026 and 2027.